Welcome to Whale.com. So today we're going to do another man versus machine video with the Gulco battery powered magnetic Moggy. And it's a portable magnetic friction drive carriage that works really well. And we're going to duplicate a shipyard atmosphere. And I'm going to use the beam down on the floor and a piece of flat bar to duplicate it. I'm going to weld one side and then we're going to let the Moggy weld the other side. So let's get started. So if we were at the shipyard, they, they take their material and they put it in the sandblast area and they sandblast it and prime it. I'm trying to do the best I can with what I have. It's not exactly the same duplicate, but it's going to work for the video. So I'm going to attack this flat bar to the I-beam and we'll get started. So today we're going to use the Everlast Power I-MIG 315. So what we did is we turned the MIG volts up to 25.6 and I had the wire speed up to 541 inches per minute. And the wire I'm using is the Bowler QS-6 035 diameter with an AWS spec of A5.18. So the wire is used in pipeline, structural work, shipbuilding, which we're gonna demonstrate today, and vehicle manufacturing, storage tanks, boilers, you know, all kinds of different varieties of the trade. So, and the reason why I like using this wire is because it's almost spatter free. So we'll get started and weld it out. All right, so what I've done, I cut a little two and a half inch spacer because that's what I, the space I want in between the welds. And the machine's set on stitch, so it's on a timer. So actually, my being doing it manually might be a, probably a little bit longer than three inches because it's on a timer. So that's why I use this two and a half inch spacer. So what I'll do is just pretend that my weld stops right here. I'll use the spacer and put my mark where I'm gonna start from. So we'll go from there and we'll get it welded out. So we're going to talk about the control features on this GSP 2100 GoCo Moggy carriage. First, what I'll do is I'll turn it on. This is the on-off switch. As you see, everything lights up on the screen, and we'll go through the features. So when you when you push the the button forward, command, of course, it lights up in the top left with an arrow going forward. So if you turn it to neutral, it goes in neutral, and when you go in reverse it lights up as it's going in reverse. And you know, reverse is really good because if you have to stop because something went wrong, you can stop it and then reverse it and then pick up where you left off. So that's a good feature. So next thing what we'll do is we'll talk about the whole stop mode active, which is it's in stop. And it's, it's a bright, constant red light, just like a stop sign. So when you push it forward, it blinks. So next what we'll talk about, we'll talk about arc signal control. So when you push it forward and push it in active, it activates the arc control and it's like a little MIG gun on the display. That way you know it's welded. So what we'll talk about next is the cycle push button. It's the little black button below the rotary button right here. And it has six programs that go along with it right here on the side displayed on it. One, two, and three programs are all timed. Four, five, and six are all manual. So it has a constant weld that's timed, and then it has a stitch mode, which starts at program four, and then five is stitch mode, and six, two is, is a constant. So next is what we'll do is we'll talk about the speed and perimeter value display, which is up in the top right, inches per minute. And of course, it has to be welded for you, for you to show it what it is. And what we'll talk about next is the speed delay. It's calibrated in inches per minute, which I just showed you. And it shows it in the top right corner. Speed adjustment counterclockwise, slower clockwise, faster. So if you turn it to the right, it goes rabbit, it goes faster. If you turn it to the left, it goes slower. It's a little rotary, rotary switch which is very easy to get to and control when, when you have it welding. So we're gonna go ahead and talk about all the other features and adjustments that this uh, Goko Magi has. 
and this feature is an adjustment for in and out. So when your mid gun's hooked up, you can go closer to your material or further away from it. This adjustment controls it to go up and down. So you get closer to your material or further away from it. So it has this long arm on it, which is really nice. That has that much adjustment on it back and forth. And of course your mid gun holder in the demo that we're going to be doing, we're going to be using an eye beam. So these rollers go right up against that eye beam and that adjustment knob is right here. So you can adjust it all the way to the end of this adjustment bar or all the way forward to the adjustment slot right here. So it has a lot of adjustment features, which really makes it easy to control and to really perfect that weld that you want to put down. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how to set this mug and carriage up as like it is in the shipyard atmosphere. And it's real simple. So you basically just put the wheels up against the, the beam and set it down because the magnet is really, really strong. And it works very, very well. So what I'll do next is I will insert the MIG gun. It's very simple. So I'll adjust it. And now we're ready to weld. So this episode was really fun. I got to dial in the Gulco 
And after you get it dialed in, it really runs really good. It does a perfect job. And it keeps the welder from being fatigued, being on his knees, bending over your back. And it really helped me a lot. So this is a really good tool to have in your arsenal. So head on over to our website, member section, and connect with us directly. And check out the members forum where our advisors will answer all your questions. See you on the next one.